regardless of life. And here he is, the only man in Britain today who walks through a car wash to clean his teeth. <laughs> Ken Dodd! Folks in crew, where British rails shunt their sausages into the sidings to mature. <laughs> Every time I travel by train, I always take a flask with me. <clears throat> then I fill it full of British rail tea and take it home. I find it's very good for descaling the kettle. <laughs> Let's face it, folks, in the old days, when you saw a big billowing cloud of smoke hanging over crew, you knew exactly what it was. The station master having a condor moment. <laughs> They were the good old days in crew. The last time I was in crew, the Flying Scot went through. It was his wife's fault for trying to defrost his spot in with a blow light. <laughs> this town, you know, this town introduced one of the most famous phrases in the English language, change at crew. No matter where you bought your ticket, they'd always say change at crew. Yeah, why they couldn't give you your change there, I'll never know. I... <laughs> what a fantastic day. <laughs> what does I... <laughs> But as I stand here tonight in this magnificent converted British rail engine shed, they... the burning questions are, is it illegal to go out badgering? And how come traffic wardens are allowed to get away with it? I mean, yes, if dogs can only see in black and white, why don't they come in different colours? I... 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 You know, I love crew. To me, it's the, it's the heart of the entertainment world. I mean, where else can you walk through the streets and enjoy a good laugh? <laughs> Everybody comes to Crew Junction sometime or other. Crew has a great railway tradition. Even the pubs open ten minutes later. <laughs> the very first ever electric train travelled 300 yards, then back again. The next year, saw the big breakthrough. It managed to travel 600 yards and back again. Then someone invented the extension lead. <laughs> Actually, now, I, I, you know, 1903 saw the introduction of the overnight berth so that everyone on the train could lie down and go to sleep. In 1904, after dozens of train crashes, it was decided that the train driver's berth should be taken away. <laughs> there are two types of trains. So the ones that carry people, they're called passenger trains, and the ones that carry animals, they're called soccer specials. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some famous people in the audience. We've got Professor Nutcase, the balmy inventor. He's just invented the microwave fireplace, so you can spend the whole night in front of the fire in six minutes. <laughs> Show business gossip. Bad manners have merged with shack attack and earth, wind and fire to bring you a bad attack of wind. <laughs> the foyer here at the Crew Lyceum is very impressive, especially the 50,000 pounds giant six foot wide cut glass chandelier. <clears throat> Mind you, the, the 40 watt bulb doesn't do much for it. <laughs> I'm privileged tonight, ladies and gentlemen, to be sharing my dressing room with Britain's finest exhibition of flood with cobwebs. <laughs> no, no, there aren't any cobwebs, no, because the bats keep knocking them down. This... <laughs> Stage director said to me before, he said, uh, would you like to be involved in a French far study? I said, no, I'm not interested in the Channel Tunnel. <laughs> I'll just pop in the office and see what's going on. <coughs> Follow me. Oh, good morning, sir. Are you waiting for my secretary? Good morning, boss. <laughs> it's me. Good gracious, Miss Golightly. <laughs> You've grown a droopy moustache and an eye patch. They're not my own. Well, I know the eye patch isn't, but what about the moustache? I was just trying them on for size, so I'd look the part. Oh, I see. You see, I'm in this Gilbert and Sullivan society so that I can pass off as a pirate. You're going to go where? <laughs> oh, I see, I'm sorry, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, the Pirates of Penzance. Oh, yes. I'm a buccaneer. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> Don't I look like a pirate? Well, you, you've got a sunken chest, that's a start. <laughs> What would you say to a wooden leg? Hello, Peggy. <laughs> you see, I've got to take a man's part because we've got a ratio of four women to every man. Oh, Chris, he must be shattered, that fellow. <laughs> a ratio. Well, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't like to be a man permanently. No, no. I'm glad I'm all woman. You are? I mean, you are, you are, you are. <laughs> yes. Muzz, muzz. Muzz, yes, take the moustache off now. Just, uh, just wear it now and again, just as a laugh for me. <laughs> no, must go lightly. Miss is for the unmarried. Of course. Missus is for married. Yes. Why should I tell everyone my status? Uh, very well, must go lightly. And what's brought this on all of a sudden? Equal opportunity. I've read that book by, oh, Carmen Gay. No, German oh. the, Greer, Greer. German, German Greer. German Greer, yes. Yes, yeah, the female Enoch. Yes. <laughs> You mustn't hold the door for me anymore. I won't. Or carry my suitcase when we go away for the weekend. We've never been away for the weekend. What are you talking about? I've got my wash bag and nappy. No, me. no, no, no. I was Thanks. just letting you know, just in case. Thanks for the warning. 
<laughs> and you needn't blow up my bicycle tyres anymore. Well, that's a relief. Do you know, I haven't no pump for the last three times. And no sexist talk either. No sexist talk. I can hold my own with any man, you know. Really? Fascinating. <laughs> Here's a local paper. What's the news here? Yeah? Bingo Hall burns down, 500 are made homeless. Uh, <laughs> a long queue formed in Crewe High Street yesterday when an Irish butcher, Seamus O'Rourke, took five hours trying to hang up the mince. Uh, <laughs> uh, lighthouse keeper arrested for flashing asks for 500,000 similar cases to be taken. <laughs> German periscope for sale would suit nosy midget. <laughs> Amaze your friends with these self-lowering Union Jack jockey shorts. Free bugle with every pair. Watch their eyes light up as they slide slowly to your ankles as you play the last post. <laughs> Good gracious, who's dumped this load of scrap iron outside the theatre? Yeah, it's moving. It looks like a mound of musical instruments on legs. There's somebody underneath it. I am the relief orchestra. When's the relief? When I stop playing. Oh. <laughs> Do you know, Pop, you must have at least 30 instruments about your person. Well, uh, 31, actually. Oh, yes. Oh, how very clever. Yes. <laughs> Do you know, I practice my instruments day and night, Doddy. Do you, Pop? Yes. Last night, I gave a blast on the alpine horn in bed. What happened? The duvet shot up the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> the cat was in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the wife as well. And the wife as well? <laughs> the fire brigade had to get her down off the roof. Your wife? No, the cat. Oh, I see. <laughs> And, you know, there was a big baldy patch where her fur had come off. Who, the cat? No, the wife. Oh! <laughs> I'm rather fond of performing contrapuntal duets with a lady soprano. Well, <laughs> you would be at your age, wouldn't you? <laughs> I, I could have been a child prodigy, you know, Daddy. Could you gather? Yes, a concert pianist. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But what, after what happened to my fingers... Your fingers? Yes. Look. You see the way they turn up? Was it an accident? Yes. I got them trapped in a till. <laughs> Good day, Joe. I'm William Wimpole from Barrett Street. Oh, yes? Yes, this is my daughter Priscilla. I'm a patron of the arts. Yes. Theatre, you know. Oh, yes. Victorian values. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm willing to sponsor your company to the tune of £50,000. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Oh, Mr. Mr. Now, just a moment. Yes? You looked at my daughter. Well, well I, was, I was only smiling at her. How <laughs> dare you, sir? You were undressing her with your eyes. No, no, honestly, all I did was just... You ruined the girl. Yeah. The moment I turned my back, you'll be glancing at her ankles. Ankles? I, I can't even see her ankles. So you looked, eh? <laughs> you realise that no decent chap will have her now? Oh. Not after you've gloated over her body oh, and smarmed her with your lecherous tongue. Oh, all I said was good evening. Good, good, good for what, sir? Well, no, good, good for having your way with her? No. Good for slaking your carnal desires on innocent young maidens? She only wanted my autograph. Then she, she shall have it, sir. She shall have it on a marriage certificate. Oh, yes, I'll see you make an honest woman of her if I have to horsewhip you from this theatre to the nearest monastery. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll have the bands read right away, sir. There's, there's just one thing. Come on, you blackguard. Out with it. Well, in view of the intimacy between us, do I take it she won't be getting married in white? <laughs> Where's my market researchers? Have you got your clipboards? Got your clipboards right. Go out and ask people in crew what sort of music they like. By Joe, these sandwich boards really get attention, don't they? Roll up, folks. Roll. Oh, this old couple. Ah, they're interested. What's it say on his chest, Sydney? It says, opening tonight. Oh, he's having an operation, is he? No, no. Hey. Just look what he says on his back. <laughs> there, right at the bottom. Doors open at 5.30, all the cheeky monkey. No, no, you, you put it all wrong, missus. You see, I'm the manager of the Palace of Laughter. Oh, he's from the job centre. No, no, no. I'm from the theatre. The theatre. 
I'm from the theatre down the road. I'm famous. Surely you recognise me. Oh, yes. The air, the teeth and the big red nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. After all these years. Oh, hello, Mari. Mari? My, oh, me. She fell out of me. And I'm dirty, dirty, I'll tackle this, uh, this pimply-faced punk. <laughs> uh, do you like music, young man? Yeah, I had a great time last week. Yes? Yeah, I went to Wembley for the Frankie Goes to Hollywood concert. Oh, yeah? He was smashing. Yeah. I bought a T-shirt, yeah. posters, stickers, badges, a sweatshirt, books, and a souvenir programme. Sounds fantastic. What was the concert like? I don't know. I couldn't afford to get in. <laughs> Good day, madam. Have you, uh, do you have a favourite song? Oh, zippity doo da Is it? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realise that. <laughs> Here we are in the most famous concert hall in the world today. A magnificent Philharmonic Symphony Orchestra will be conducted by the greatest living master. House lights dim, and I can see the conductor enter. He walks to the centre of the concert platform, mounts the podium. He picks up his baton, faces this superb orchestra, raises both arms, and... Where's my shirt? <laughs> and where's my concerto? I can't conduct a concerto with no shirt on, can I? Oh, this is the best band I've ever worked with. Where's my shirt? Watch the show from the side of the stage. See who's on. Uh, Mr. Dodd, I'm a little worried about that chandelier over the stalls. I, I swear I heard those chains creak. Stop worrying, Aubrey. Of course they creak. The thing weighs nearly a ton, that chandelier does. Yes, but you see, if that thing comes down on the audience, we will never hear the last of it. Neither will they. <coughs> Look, Aubrey, <laughs> you worry too much. Those chains are strong enough to carry an elephant. <clears throat> Mind you, the hook in the ceiling looks a bit dodgy. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I am cancelling the show. Make a special announcement. Ask all the people in the stalls to sit with their hands on their heads. <laughs> I should cushion the blow. That, I just can't help being a worrier. Oh, yeah, yeah, now, about this lion tamer, the Mr. Lion tamer, Dodd. Yes. Is his act safe? 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 Mm. There's nothing to worry about, now that all his wounds have healed. Mm. <laughs> You see, the door of the cage doesn't even shut properly. Well, yes, you know that, and he knows that. But nobody's told the lions. <laughs> In any case, all the ice cream girls are armed with water pistols. Yeah, but I, I hope you're right, Mr. Dobb, because one of them nearly bit through the bars last night. Oh, those girls have got good teeth. Oh, I see what you mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dobb, Mr. Dobb, I want you to meet my performing dog. I've already met him. He's clinging to my trouser leg. <laughs> This dog, this dog's a genius. Is he? Aye. Rather, rather. What time is it? <laughs> there you are, half past one. <laughs> no, it isn't. It's a quarter to eight. Well, he ain't got his watch with him. <laughs> he does impress it, you know. He does impress it, you know. Rather, rather. Do an impression. <laughs> You hear that? Dustin Hoffman with the sore throat. <laughs> and he's the same size as well. Oh, I've never heard such rubbish. Hey, 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 hey. Wind your neck in. Wind your neck in. You haven't seen his best trick. Yeah. Now, Rolfe, jump through this hoop. <laughs> you threw him. I didn't. Yes, you did. You threw him through the hoop. No, I didn't. I was, uh, I was giving him a start. <laughs> Now, but I think he's going to give you one. Uh, Rover, good dog, good dog. Now get down, Rover, Rover. Who's on the stage now? I'll go and watch him. Oh, who's the fire eater? I always watch this fire eater from the wings. He's a laugh a minute. <laughs> I, I've never seen him before. Well, you won't have done. He's, he's just done seven years for arson. 
Hello, look, oh, he's missed his mouth again. Uh, it can't be easy, you know, being short-sighted and having a nervous twitch. Hey, he set fire to his singlet. <laughs> so he has. Mind you, isn't the smell of burning hair sickening? <clears throat> it's all done with petrol, you know. You're not telling me he drinks petrol? Oh, five gallons of four-star a day. Oh. He can't move in his house for chunky tumblers. <laughs> anyway, just look at those flames pouring from his mouth. Yes. Wind. Yes. <laughs> Wind it is. I keep telling him you can't mix petrol with cucumber sandwiches. I wonder if he's doing anything tomorrow. Yeah, you don't need a fire eater, do you? No, but I could do with the paint burning off our front door. <laughs> and now it's time for Ken Dodd's Diddy Ditty. Now the sun's going down at the end of the day. It's a lonely old town You're a thousand miles away Here I sit all alone Picturing your smile Till the day you come home Darling, once in a while Think of me Wherever you are Wherever you are I'm thinking of you and my love will shine Like the bright evening star That is shining on you Wherever you are Now the moon's in the sky And I'm missing you so Time slowly goes by As the days come and go Till you're home once again This is all I can say Darling, just now and then At the end of each day Think of me Wherever you are Wherever you are I'm longing to be Every night I know No matter how far That wherever you are You're thinking of me So good night and God bless wherever you may be The moon that you see is shining on me We may be wells apart But the love we knew then Will be safe in my heart Till you need it again Think of me wherever you are Wherever you are My love will shine like the bright evening star that is shining on you wherever you are. Think of me. Think of me. There's a bar for a little tickle tonic. <coughs> oh, look, against the bar, the famous Ector, thespian, Mr. Fortescue Hyphen Smythe. Ah, uh, Mr. Fortescue, or can I call you Hyphen? <laughs> Kenneth, my dear boy, so nice to see you. Tell me, uh, have you given any thought to which little soliloquy you intend to regale our audience with this evening? Well, I thought uh, Shakespeare's Henry V's famous speech of the Battle of Agincourt would yes. be most appropriate. Yes, well, right. yes, yes. Once more into the breach, dear friends, once more, or close up the wall with our English dead. And when the blast of war blows in our ears, stiffen the sinews, summon up the blood, follow your spirits and upon this charge cry. Tell Packers to chase Nanny and Christmas, <laughs> My friends, I have always given the theatre the very best I have to offer. Still, it's no good apologising. A musical, that's it. A musical, that's what I'll give you. Girls, tights, feathers, legs, pink flesh. Oh, I love it when you talk dirty. Oh, remember, remember all the great musicals. The one about Red Rum, Gigi. The 
Chicken musical, Bantam of the Opera. <laughs> the High Fiber musical, The Sound of Musily. <laughs> Our story opens on a typical English summer morning. In the small alpine village of Chipping Witness near Birkenhead, a big hairy-chested individual with brawny tattooed arms runs down a cobbled street. She is Maria Pickersgill. <laughs> Poor peasant girl. She has a song in her heart and a hole in her sock. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you, Maria. Later, perhaps. Yes. Ma Maria has just completed a job course. A government scheme that trains young ladies to smash windows, telephone boxes, and paint rude words on any available flat surface. Oh, job, I needed that. <laughs> Maria lived at the nunnery of St. Dorian's in the lush countryside of Birkenhead. <laughs> Maria is a clumsy girl. Her life is one oops after another. One day, the abbess stubs her toe on Maria's training weights and breaks her vow of silence. <laughs> Maria, I'm afraid the time has come when you must leave us. You have been with us now for six months and you have touched all of us. Every sister... <laughs> every sister in the convent has either a broken leg, wrist or concussion. I'm giving you a letter of introduction to Count von Strapp. He has 17 children and he's looking for a nanny. So put on this little white goatee beard and move your butt over to his slosh in Pluto. I'm living in no slosh house. A castle, Maria. Count von Strapp runs a bacon butty bar in Pluto. <laughs> Jawohl! Guten Abend! Hallo, Sir! I'm looking for Von Strapp. Ah, oh, jawohl! Yes, I am he, Von Strapp. Handsome widower, father of 17 and champion yodeler of Fazakali. This morning I caught my glockenspiel in the barn doors. <laughs> As you can see, I also have the later host, but that's my problem. I take it you are applying for the position? What position? I haven't decided yet. Would you like to see my CV? Not really. When you've seen one French car, you've seen them all. <laughs> I don't think I've had the pleasure. You should write things down if you can't remember. Under Maria's expert tuition, the Von Strapp family walked off with all the prizes at the local musical festival. But the police caught them and made them take them back again. <laughs> Wonderful! Everything is going swimmingly. Everything is going swimmingly, Your Excellency. Yes. Why don't you learn to make thicker gravy, Maria? <laughs> With Maria looking after him and 17 family allowances coming into the house, Von Strapp decided it was time he gave up work. He'd lie in bed until dinner time and only get up to put a bet on. Frustrated by his attitude, Maria sings the musical's most famous song. And then one day, a jack-booted figure with a black moustache and evil eyes appeared on the scene. Maria, your mother is here for a visit. <laughs> the council had banned all yodeling. Secret yodeling parties and meetings were held all over northern England. <laughs> oh, shh. Oh, shh. Oh, shh. If you do not cooperate with the new order, we have ways of persuading you. Maria, get the children. It's time for this family to do a runner. We will escape over the mountains. Do you know the Pennine Way? Please, sir. I am but a maiden of some 17 summers. And about 45 blooming hard winters. <laughs> Come, let us climb every mountain. It's a good job I have this Alpine guidebook, Wigan edition. For three days, they trekked over the mountains, stopping only once while Captain Von Strapp burst into song. I caught my zip on the prickly thorn bush. <laughs> At last we've made it. Luke Count von Strapp, nestling down there in the valley. Oh, isn't it dead romantic, eh? Funny, I've never thought of Barnsley as being romantic. Luke, thousands of 
nuns have turned out to greet us, all waving their arms in excitement. So they are, but just, just a bit. They're not nuns. They're penguins. <laughs> We've ended up in the Orkneys. You and your rigging guidebook. We must have taken the wrong turning at Cleck Eaton, you clumsy coloratura. Tassie bye, everybody! Tassie bye! Tassie bye! <laughs> Appearing with Ken Dodd at crew were Peter Goodwright, Paula Tilbrook, Colin Edwin, Sibby Jones and the Brian Fitzgerald Palace Band. The programme was written by John Pye, Norman Beadle, Barry Reeves, Ken Rock and Colin Brown and produced by Ron McDonnell.